Hello everybody, while I was away on holiday I managed to brick my Onion IoT by uh, connecting it to a network and then changing computers and connecting it to a network again. Unknown to me, it was doing a firmware update when I connected it again. It must have disconnected from the wireless and uh, basically then flashed a, a partial firmware. Um, it'll be quite interesting to show you actually what it um, what it does when it boots and, and this is going to be my first time attempting to recover from what went wrong so um, I'm just going to show you as I do it and you can see all my mistakes and just hopefully work out how you are supposed to recover a bricked Omega Onion IoT device so uh, give me just a moment take a drink of water and uh, let's continue so what I've got here is the Onion device plugged in via mini USB and also with the Ethernet expansion dock plugged into my network. There are ways to do this without the Ethernet expansion dock using um, I think capacitors and soldering onto the pins directly on the Onion device but luckily I have the Ethernet expansion so that makes that bit a whole lot easier. So let's swap over to my virtual machine and also let's see if I can move that over so you can see the onion device later. Mm, maybe. I'll give up with that. Um, so, first off, get started on the onion Omega website. Windows, okay, I need the drivers. Track those drivers to my desktop. Go into Device Manager, and indeed, it needs the drivers. So update driver, browse, desktop, go. Perfect. Take a note of the COM port there. So COM three. Uh, their instructions say you need PuTTY. I also prefer PuTTY, so let's do that. going to chuck that in the root of my C drive because that's where I find it much easiest to cope with it. And 115200 is the speed. So run C putty serial 115200 and it was COM3. I'm going to save this so I don't have to type it if I have to reconnect. Go. So supposedly, I'm now connected to the Onion Omega. So now, let me see if I can position this so that it actually can be in the camera view, just to the right of the video. Yes. Right, I'm going to turn on the Omega, and you can see what it does at the moment. So, go. Hopefully, yes, output. So it goes to boot, and then has trouble reading the file system at some point it basically just loops doing that for probably 10 seconds or so and then does a kernel panic and explodes. Yep, there you go, kernel panic, not synchronising. So, as far as I understand, if I switch off the onion and switch it back on again, and I really like this design where if you switch off the onion um, it doesn't drop the serial connection so all this electronics here stays active which is really useful otherwise you'd have to keep loading and closing putty so I'm going to turn it on again press any key no maybe that was that's the wrong way I think you hold down the reset button for a certain number of se um, seconds and also the number of seconds is if you don't have a serial output is denoted by the light on the onion board so let's hold down reset and switch it on again. No, nope, I didn't manage to hold down the reset button. Let's try that again. Ah, 
I need seven seconds for the net console. Five, six, seven, go. Let go. Booting to net console. So, again, as far as I'm aware, that has now become live on my network. So, let's see if we can find it. I'm going to guess at the default IP. I could have saved myself some time by actually writing down what they say it will be on. Bad guess, and in fact it might not be net console, it might be the uh, the web fail safe mode, so let me just try that as well. So switch the onion off, hold down reset, turn it on, I need it for three seconds, so one, two, three, let go. Ah, perfect, it even tells me the IP address, so. But I've made a mistake here, because I actually need the firmware file first. So let's go back onto my network and onto my internet. So the firmware files, it took me ages to find this, it's not very well documented on their website. It's at repo.onion.io forward slash omega forward slash images. And I'm going to go for the latest image, which I presume is, yes, at the bottom of the list, released. No, maybe not at the bottom of the list, it looks like because of their naming scheme it's ended up in the middle. Hmm. Hmm, these upload dates don't make much sense. How confusing. Anyway, I'm sure that any will get me going, so let me try version 1 build 155 uh, yes let's do that so downloaded that now let's go back to the network which the Omega in its recovery mode is on so I should be able to ping 1.1 Indeed I can. Let's try loading that as a web page. Very convenient. Right, so, downloads folder, Omega. Let's just see whether it does anything on the serial output while I do this, so update. Oh, it does. So at least it's uh, well, it's given me an update progress there, and also over serial, it's uh, given me a nice progress bar as well. While it's doing that, it's going to check for rogue add-ons on my virtual machine, which I was testing malware with the other day. So I've absolutely no idea how long this might take to flash, but let's, uh, let's see. The status light is blinking away on the Omega, and it's just stopped. Ritting at address. <laughs> I think uh, that might be a typo, or some English. And no activity whatsoever. Oh, no, there we go, on the serial. It looks like it's rebooted. And booting.
Hmm, okay, looks like I have been successful with that, which is nice, so I just need to make sure that it's on my network when this uh, is finished booting. And then I'll actually run a proper update again and, and uh, just make sure that it brings itself up to the latest console version. Taking a very long time to boot though. And it's ready, I think. Yes. Hmm. Doesn't seem to have a, a LAN Ethernet address. Um, oops. That did just took a while. Although it needs an IP address. Perfect. Except for some reason I've noticed this wizard often fails to load in Firefox. Whoops. So hopefully now I'll do a software update to the latest version. So at this point is where I reconnected to the Wi-Fi uh, when I managed to brick the onion. As I said, I think it had partially downloaded an update, obviously it doesn't do a, a hash check and, and just tries to apply it anyway. So I ended up bricking, or not bricking it, but um, corrupting the firmware requiring me to do this. of no obvious status going on here, so there's no output other than on the web browser, there's no output on serial, and the light on the Omega itself is not flashing yet. almost to the point where I don't think it's actually doing anything. It might be an incredibly old firmware, so it could just be that. See if I can find out what the latest firmware is. Ah, oh, no, there we go. It just took a very long time with no, no obvious uh, status that it was actually doing anything. So it's lucky I didn't unplug the uh, Omega and plug it back in. So um, there we go. If it gets to that stage and there's no no sign that it's doing anything, just wait longer because unplugging it probably would have caused further problems at that point.
quite amazed at how long this does take to uh no, I guess it's actually finished there, so it has. So if I go back onto my IP range and see whether I can get to the Omega via its normal web interface. Perfect. Yes, I can. And it has got uh, an extra bit. Oh, two extra bits. Perfect. The OLED controller as well. Uh, since the last time I managed to successfully use the Omega. Excellent. They are definitely getting on creating this console. Very, very pleased and uh, eager to see how things progress. I mean, uh, really happy with this Onion device so far as one of the original backers. There you go, a bit confusing with the firmware though because the firmware I downloaded I think said version 1 and apparently they've gone backwards now onto version <laughs> 0.5 but uh, there you go, at least it still managed to get me out of this situation but for your use you may wish to download uh, that version of the firmware. But I hope this video is helpful for some people and um, enjoy. Hope you've managed to debrick your device.